Welcome to the 2020 Graph Drawing Contest Report. I'm Philip Kindermann, the chair of the Contest Committee, and I represent the Contest Committee, which also consists of Tamara Mechet Lietze, Walter Möhlemanns, and Ignaz Hutter. For a brief historic perspective on the contest, this is the 27th installment. It exists since 1994. And we have plotted here the number of submissions, the number of winners, and the number of categories in each year. Note that since 2014 the number of categories has always been constant 4 and this year we had exactly the same number of winners and submissions as last year, which I think was the first time that ever happened. We have here a list of all the winners of all the years. It gets smaller every year and harder to read, but you can also read it on the contest website. This year, we, like I said, we had four topics, we had two creative topics, and we had two categories in the live challenge. The first creative topic was Ravenkel Saga. This is a saga about the old Iceland in the 10th century, and we wanted you to draw the graph of the genealogy and of the interactions between the actants of the saga. The second graph was larger, which was the K-pop graph. Here we wanted you to draw the relationships between Korean artists, bands, managements and recording companies. In the live challenge, we wanted you to draw a number of directed graphs, a straight line upward embeddings in the plane, while minimizing the number of crossings. And you had one hour for both categories. In total, we got five submissions for Ravenkel Saga and four submissions for K-pop, while we had 13 teams that participated in the manual category, where you were only allowed to use a provided tool, and we had seven submissions in the automatic category. And I'm very happy especially about those seven submissions. That's a pretty big number. Usually we don't have that many. As for the participants, like for the conference, most of them were from Germany, 38, but we also had 20 from Austria, 8 from France, 5 from Canada, 4 from the Netherlands, 2 from Italy and the United States, and 1 each from Czech Republic, United Kingdom, Hungary and Israel. Let's start with the results of the first creative topic, Gravenkel Saga. The saga this tells of struggles between chieftains and farmers in the east of the Iceland in the 10th century. And we wanted you to model all those relationships and acts between the actants of the saga. The graph had 43 nodes and 110 edges, so it was a rather small graph. We received 5 submissions for this, and I now want to show you the winners of this category. On the shared 4th place, we have 2 submissions. The first one of those is by Fabrizia Bechtold, Blend Mekuani and Edunua Sikiri from TU Vienna. Here they have a very nice drawing where all the actants are laid out on a circle and all the arcs are either circular arcs inside or outside of the drawing, where the color indicates in which chapter this action happens. The second submission on the shared fourth place is by Lucas Siaciones from UBC and Bea Subion from Dumbledore. This is a nice orthogonal drawing where the story unfolds from top to the bottom. So you can follow one character from top to the bottom and then you see all their interactions with other characters in the saga. Now we come to the top three. On the third place we have a submission by Henry Förster, Alex Kukuk and Lena Schlipp from University of Tübingen. They made a very creative storyline visualization. And just looking at this poster here, it doesn't give it justice, so we had it printed and we had it folded and glued according to this instruction. And when you do that, then you get something that looks like a rune stone, and it's very impressive, and I will probably put it in my office. We especially like the creativity of the submission. I think this was the first one where you had to cut and fold and glue something to get the full picture. On the second place, we have a submission by Fabian Jogel, Melanie Paschinger and Adrian Chmurovic from TU Vienna. This is a circular layout where every character is one of these concentric circular arcs and the intersections are a straight line between the circular arcs. And for each interaction, there's also a special symbol that's laid out, out here in the legend where you can read what type of interaction we have. 
We especially liked that it was very clear to read and you could easily find interactions between those actors. And on the first place, we have a submission by Tamara Drucks, Moritz Leidinger and Julio Passe from TU Vienna, which again is a kind of a circular layout, but it's not really a circle, it's a spiral. And this really gives a lot to the drawing, making the spiral, where we can follow again from the beginning, following these colored, uh, not really circular arcs, but close to it, where every color represents one character, and having icons where you can see the interactions. And it's just very nice to follow a character and see all the interactions with the other actors. Well, thank you for your nice submissions and congratulations. In the second creative topic, we gave you the K-pop graph. Here the vertices are various actors, so performers, bands, producers, promoters, production companies, and the edges are relationships between them. And this was a very large graph. It had 4674 nodes and 5094 edges. We received four submissions for this category. On the fourth place, we have a submission by Monika Wismann, Mylinda Lugici and Mal Kurteschi from TU Vienna. This is a so-called Hive layout, where all the artists and the groups and the labels are laid out on these three uh, lines and all the edges are only between them. And this is very nice to get a big overview of the graph. And if you filter it, then you can really see some interactions. On the third place we have a very similar layout, which was done by Markus Wallinger and Xiang Yun Wu, also TU Vienna. This is again a Hive layout. Here they also gave us the drawing of some of those filters, where you can see some interactions that usually you won't see in other datasets. For example, from this visualization they found out that small labels are more likely to sign male artists than female ones. And this is something that you cannot see in any of the other layouts. The second place is a submission by a long list of authors from University of Tübingen. They not only submitted a poster, but they even implemented the whole thing and made it an interactive website that you can visit by following this link or scanning this QR code. And on this website you can click on artists, you can click on labels, you can explore in the network a lot, you can get different styles of drawings for subgraphs, and this is something that we liked a lot of the submission. And the first place is a submission by Robert Etrich, Julian Haumer and Samantha Fuchs from TU Vienna. This is a static submission, but here, just with a single view, you can already see a lot. You have big circles for the labels, and inside you have circles for the groups, and you have icons for the actants. And you immediately see what are the largest labels, how are the labels interconnected, and it gives a very nice overview of this huge field of K-pop stars. Thank you all for your great submissions, and congratulations to the winners! Let's go to the live challenge. The topic of the live challenge this year was crossing minimization and upward drawings. As input, you received a directed graph and the size of a grid. And the output was a straight line upward embedding where the vertices had to lie on the grid. It must be a proper drawing so we cannot have any overlaps and the objective was to minimize the number of crossings in the drawing. For example, this is an upward drawing with one crossing, which we can remove, but now this is not upward anymore. However, there is also an upward drawing with no crossings. In total we had 13 graphs, 6 for the manual category and 7 additional larger graphs for the automatic category. The first graph was a pretty small and quite easy one and both the manual and the automatic category people found out the optimum drawing with three crossings. In graph true you required nine crossings and here we can see that I think the manual solution looks much better than the automatic solution that was submitted by Just for Fun. And the way that this graph was created was from a triangulation where some of those uh, flip edges have been inserted to create crossings. 
graph number three, the input already looked very structured, but the output looks much different. And here we have the first difference between the manual and the automatic, because in the automatic category people found a drawing with one fewer crossing. In graph 4 it was rather the opposite. Here the input looks terrible, but in the manual category some people found drawings with zero crossings, while the best automatic solution had two crossings. And this graph is actually an example of an upward planar graph that requires exponential area, where we removed some of the edges and apparently it was not enough, you could still do it with zero crossings. In graph number 5 we again had the same number of crossings for the manual and automatic category. Here what's interesting is this was actually just a spiral that we plucked together a bit. And then we got something where you required crossings. And graph number 6, again both categories found a solution with zero crossings. But here I like the automatic solution much more because it preserves a lot of the structure. If you stare at it for a while, maybe you can figure out what this graph is. Because this is actually a map of Europe. And here with some fantasy you can still figure out which country is which. In this solution you cannot really do that. For graph number 7, which was the first one that was only available to the automatic category, we had something similar, we had a map of the US. And here we had a small blunder, because we already gave this as an input to the users. So if you just submitted the input drawing, you already had one with zero crossings. Some didn't care and still solved the for example team simple as best, they still had zero crossings, but it looks much different than the input drawing. For the next graphs I will just show you what was the best solution that we received this year from simple as best. This year nothing changed from GD19 and this year from again nothing changed from GD19. But it's interesting because this actually has a very nice drawing which looks like that with just a map of the earth. And there is not much resemblance here. This is the best solution for graph 11, for graph 12 and this for graph 13. So let's move on to the results. Let's start with the manual category. We had 13 teams and 6 graphs. For the first graph many teams found the best solution with 3 crossings and all others had one with 4. For the second graph the best solutions we got was 9 and the worst was 31. But most people found 9 or 10. For the third graph the best submission had 8 crossings but most people again were between 8 and 10. In the fourth graph we see some big differences because we had two teams that found a drawing with zero crossings while all the others had at least 7 and one team even 264. And now we have these two teams that are already far ahead. On problem number 5 the best solutions we got had two crossings, most people found one with four. And on the final graph this was again a planar one and here we had many teams that found a planar solution, one team unfortunately didn't find any and this gives us the winners. Oh, on place three we have the team, this time we brought three chargers which consists of Fulio Aguirre, Martin Gronemann and Henry Förster. On place 2 we have team up arrow which consists of the one and only Martin Löffler. And on place 1 we have team upwards which consists of Jonathan Klavitter and Johannes Sink. Congratulations! Let's move to the automatic category. Here we had 7 teams which as I already said before I find amazing that we had so many competitive teams that participated here. For the first few graphs the teams were very similar and most of them found very good solutions for the graphs that we provided. We can already see after 4 graphs we have one team nothing changed from GD19 that's far ahead and a few teams that are slightly behind. After the first 6 graphs which were the graphs of the manual category it seems like nothing changed from GD19 and simple as best are the top 2 but then it's close between Team XUBC and Team GraphX. 
So now we get to the larger graphs. Here, seven, everybody solved optimally. Luckily, there was one submission first where it had two crossings, but at some point they figured out that you can do it with zero. For eight, these two teams already pull ahead much further. And for the larger graphs, these two teams, they couldn't compete anymore. And here especially, we have one submission with seven, 31 and 60, and the other submissions had more than a thousand. So there are some big differences for the large graphs. But if we just compare these two, for the very big graphs, simple as bad again becomes a little bit better than nothing changed from GD19, especially here for the last one. So this brings us to the winners. On place three, we have Team Graph X, which consists of Luca Castelli Aliardi and a bunch of his students. On the second place, we have Team Simple is Best, which consists of Sebastian Benner and Dominik Dürschnabel. And the first place goes to Team Nothing Changed from GD19, which consists of Solvay Klepper, Axel Kukuk, uh, Paul Palomero, Bernardo, Maximilian Pfister, Patricia Angelini, Michalis Bekos, Henry Förster and Michael Kaufmann. Congratulations to these three teams for your very good algorithms. We will conclude with some announcements for next year's contest. First, I want to thank Ignaz a lot. He was a member of the contest committee from 2013 on, so now for eight years, but this unfortunately marks the last year that he was a member of the contest committee, as he will leave after this conference. He did a lot for the contest to bring it to the shape that it is at now, and especially I have to thank him that he was the one who always created these evil graphs that you had to solve in the manual and automatic category. Now someone else has to take over and create those graphs. They probably won't be as evil as Ignaz ones, but we will still try very hard to give you interesting graphs for next year. We want to announce the task for next year's contest. The first creative topic next year will be an augmentation map. Here notes are issues, arguments and facts, and edges specify relationships like support and attack among them. One example drawing of something like this is for the planet under pressure argumentation map, where here we have some arguments and we have the edges how these arguments interact with each other. The second creative topic is about movie remakes. Here the vertices are directors and we have an edge if one director remade a movie of the other director. And the data we have looks like this from Wikipedia. We have some new remade movies and some old movies and we have the directors of both of them. Maybe we also add some actors, we are still discussing this, we will see the details soon. And the new life challenge for the next two years will be about planar polyline edge length ratio. So as the input you will receive an arbitrary planar graph with a planar embedding, some width and some height of a grid. And we want you to output a plane polyline drawing where the vertices and bands are on the W times H grid and where the ratio between the longest and shortest edge is minimized. For example, in this drawing here, the ratio between the longest and shortest is 1 because they all have the same length. Thank you for watching the report and have fun solving the new two creative topics and participating in the next live challenge. I hope to again get many submissions and I hope to see you again next year.